Good morning, glorious ones. John 10.10 says, Jesus came that we might have life and have it in abundance. This word life comes from the Greek word zoe. This is the word Jesus uses in connection with eternal life. It is different from our natural life and all other forms of life. Before we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are spiritually dead. Ephesians 2.1 says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, he became a partaker of Satan's nature. Spiritual death is the nature of the devil. This nature has been the cause of all the sin, misery, sickness, disease, and lack in the human race. Sin has caused mankind to feel inferior, guilty, and unworthy. It's caused people to feel hatred, jealousy, and bitterness. James 3, 14 through 15 says, If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. All the crime that goes on in our world is the result of the sin nature that man possesses. The reason that man cannot stand right with God is because his nature is enmity against God. Romans 8, 7 tells us that it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. See, this sin nature must be taken out of man and a new nature must be given to him. He must be recreated. This recreation can only be accomplished by imparting to him a new nature. 2 Peter 1.4 says, We must become partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. This corruption is spiritual death. The only way we can escape it is by the new birth, by receiving this new nature, the nature of God. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus came to bring to man a new nature, eternal life. Until man has this new nature, he is living in the realm of spiritual death, and he is a subject of Satan. Ephesians 2.12 says that, At that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Man apart from God can't come into God's presence. He is alienated from the life of God. His nature is against God. His only hope lies in a new creation. In John 5, 24, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. When we receive God's eternal life, we pass out of the realm of death and into the realm of life. There is no judgment for the man who has passed out of Satan's realm into God's realm. He passes out of death into life. It's an actual birth out of Satan's family into God's family. Colossians 1.13 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. This is the new birth. This is what 2 Corinthians 5.17-18 through 18 says, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. This is an actual transition of man from Satan's family into God's family. 1 John 3, 14 through 15 says, we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. This new life that has come into us is God's life. God is love. So it is a new love that has come into our lives. It is receiving the nature of God, eternal life. 
Until man receives God's eternal life, he is not a child of God. We are God's children, not by adoption only, but by an actual new birth of our spirits. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God gives us eternal life, which is his very own nature. As soon as we are born again, our spirits will begin to react upon our minds. We must renew our minds to the Word of God so that our minds are also recreated. Then we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. When we believe and act upon the Word, we become possessors of eternal life. 2 Peter 1, 3-4 says, His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Eternal life makes us righteous. Eternal life makes us love. Eternal life makes us able to please the Father. Eternal life is the most important thing in life today. Have you received eternal life? If you have, you are God's child. I exhort you to meditate on the scriptures until your new creation becomes a living reality. Well, God bless you guys. If you were encouraged today and would like to donate to our ministry, simply go on to gordonministries.org and click donate. I love you and am praying for you today.